In at 10, Carla Bellucci. 37 year old Carla Bellucci is a former model and is also known as the UK's most hated influencer. And that's because she faked clinical depression to get a free nose job from the NHS, valued at $14,000 US. <laughs> that kind of rhymed. She also bragged about it on this morning and she said she had no regrets. Carla insists that there are other people who are taking advantage of the NHS because of cracks in the system and she was coached on what to say. The NHS doesn't always pay for cosmetic surgery, but there have been instances where they do pay for cosmetic surgery for psychological or health reasons. Bellucci also says that her 90,000 Instagram followers regularly send her gifts and she even tried to crowdfund a $30,000 Brazilian butt lift. That one didn't really work out though ever since the truth about her came out. In at number 9, Aga Brzezostowska. Aga, who's known online as Alicia, is 20 years old and Polish born. From her Instagram photos, she appears to be black. But when a photo of her when she was 13 went viral, showing much lighter skin and a much thinner body, she was accused of blackfishing and cultural appropriation. So blackfishing is a term to describe people who pose as black or mixed race on social media by using makeup, hair products, and sometimes even surgery. Alicia describes herself as being olive skin and denies the accusations of cultural appropriation. She simply likes fake tanning. A lot. But that is not all. She also sports cornrows on a regular basis, and her style can only be described as urban. You can't deny how different she looked when she was 13, and many have accused her of getting surgery so she looks more like a black woman. Alicia is a micro influencer with about 25,000 followers, but she has received free clothes and products in exchange for posts. She denies getting surgery to change her body, and she also denies being white. <laughs> At number eight on our list, Rob Vanna. Yovana Mendoza, aka Rob Vanna, is a YouTuber famously known for being a vegan. She she regularly posts content about her vegan lifestyle. Well, she used to anyway. She had a devoted fan base who would turn to her for tips and inspiration, and she has 1.2 million followers on Instagram. That number actually used to be 1.3 million followers because back in March of 2019, she was exposed after she was seen in another blogger's video eating fish. How dare you! How dare you eat fish? Yovana finally came clean in a 33 minute YouTube video where she tries to explain herself, stating that veganism has been detrimental to her health. She began to lose her menstrual cycles, she was fatigued, and her doctor told her that she had to eat eggs and meat. She was forced to abandon her vegan diet after six years and started eating fish and eggs. Since the scandal broke, she's changed her name to Yovana and not Ravana because that would imply she eats a raw diet. You get what I'm saying. At seven, Emily Ratajkowski. <laughs> Emily Ratajkowski and her millionaire husband were exposed by their landlord because apparently they don't pay rent. <laughs> what? They live for free in their NoHo loft in New York thanks to a legal loophole meant to protect struggling artists. Her husband, filmmaker Sebastian Blair McClaird, is worth an estimated $12 million, but apparently he owes his landlord $120,000 because he and his wife are exploiting the loft law, which helps struggling artists and low income families in need of affordable housing by preventing landlords from kicking them out if they live illegally in commercial loft spaces. This law has been in place since 1982, but as you can probably tell, one of the most famous supermodels in the world and her millionaire husband are not struggling artists. To make matters worse, their landlord reports that they regularly have loud parties until the wee hours of the morning, making it difficult for their neighbors to get a good night's sleep. After the news broke, Emily's comment section on Instagram was filled with nasty remarks from people who are urging her to just like, yo, pay your rent, dude. And at number six, we got Lisa Lee, the woman who inspired this list. Love you, Lisa. Lisa Lee is a Weibo influencer from China who often flaunts her lavish lifestyle online, as most influencers do. But the problem is, she was like cropping out what her apartment really looked like. Lisa Lee made international news in September of 2019 after her former landlady gave a guided tour of her former apartment. The place was covered in dog excrement, garbage, dust, and it pretty much looked like a landfill. Lisa's landlord felt compelled to expose Lisa for who she really is after Lisa moved out of her property without paying bills, and also apparently without cleaning. After several failed attempts to call her, Lisa's landlady basically had enough and she wanted to show the world what her former tenant was really like. Her apartment was so disgusting that professional cleaners refused to touch it. Like not even with like rubber gloves, dude. That's saying something. It's like radioactive. Miraculously, Lisa came out of hiding and returned to thousands upon thousands of messages from angry fans who called her a phony. Lisa did end up apologizing to her landlady. She paid her back the unpaid utility costs and also posted a video that shows her cleaning her gross flat. Sweeping up the dog poo. 
By that time though, it was already too late. Halfway there now at number 5, Your Highness Xiao Bi Lu. This influencer was a live streamer from China who's known for her sweet and healing voice. She had many generous followers, close to a million of them on Do You, who donated more than $15,000 to her just to watch her. She has the appearance of a young, vivacious woman. But it turns out that she was using a filter all along. A glitch revealed that she's actually a 58 year old woman. That's awkward. Needless to say, she lost a ton of followers who were mostly men. Live streaming is a very lucrative business in China. There are around 425 million live streamers who commonly use face filters. They make money by singing karaoke, talking, or eating. <laughs> but because many of them use face filters, you never know what a Chinese live streamer really looks like. So best keep your money in your pockets, fellas. Huh? At number 4 we've got Caroline Calloway. Caroline Calloway is an American influencer with about 800,000 Instagram followers who found fame through her clever captions and by using the hashtag Adventuregram. But it turns out that her huge following might be totally fake. In a tell all essay written by Caroline Calloway's ex best friend, Natalie Beach, she was exposed for taking out ads designed to look like posts to promote her Instagram. And she bought tens of thousands of fake followers to make it seem like she had a way bigger following than she actually had. But that's not all Caroline was lying about. Natalie Beach claims that she helped Caroline write her always witty and hilarious captions and almost half of her proposal for her unwritten memoir. The story goes that Caroline was told by literary professionals that no one would ever buy a memoir from someone with no following and no claim to fame. That's fair enough. So she went ahead and she created the fame herself. She ended up landing a $375,000 book deal and got $500,000 in advance to write her memoir about being an influencer. She never credited her friend Natalie for doing a huge chunk of the writing for her. Gotta hand it to Caroline. She fooled everyone, but she never went ahead with her book deal. She's widely known now as a scammer and she owes her publisher over $100,000. Getting close now at number 3, Tana Mojo. Tana Mojo, aka YouTube's queen of clout, recently married fellow clout chaser Jake Paul in a lavish wedding in Las Vegas. After the wedding, there were a lot of people coming out of the woodwork to say that the wedding was kind of fake. First of all, it wasn't registered in the state of Nevada where the wedding took place, so there's your first red flag. Big, big red flag. Also, the couple didn't leave their wedding together either. Kind of weird. So that's another red flag. At the time, Tana took to Twitter to shut down rumors about her wedding being fake. But a few days later, she actually admitted that the whole thing was a sham in an episode of her YouTube show, Tana Turns 21. She said, I quote, I think we are all trying to piece together the puzzles of what we actually want this engagement and marriage to be. I have a lot of love for him, but it's still something fun and lighthearted that we're obviously doing for fun and content. I mean, obviously you're just doing it for fun and content. So when Tana admitted this, people were pretty angry about it. A lot of people paid a lot of money to watch that wedding. I think it was like $50 or something to stream it. So Tana went on Twitter to explain herself. She said, I understand people's frustrations with the soundbite from the show and it's the last thing I want to talk about right now, but obviously I just uploaded an 8 minute YouTube video on how much I love Jake and I'm not trying to look like that much of a sociopath. In further tweets, she basically said that the soundbite from the MTV show was taken out of context and she didn't actually admit that her marriage was fake. So she still wants people to believe that she and Jake Paul are married. I highly doubt that. And at our number two spot, Danielle Kahn. <sighs> Danielle. We couldn't do a list like this without featuring Danielle Kahn. With 3.7 million followers on Instagram and 1.5 million subscribers on YouTube, Danielle Kahn is probably one of the best known controversial social media influencers in the world. And that is because, for a long time, no one knew her real age. She claimed online that she was 15 years old, but there were numerous YouTube videos made to expose her real age, which is actually 13. Then recently, Danielle Cohn's own father came forward to expose the truth about Danielle's real age because he was worried about her safety. Companies like YouTube, Fashion Nova, Instagram, Buzzfeed, Universal, Target, and Bang Energy Drinks were okay with child exploitation. What I mean by that is, Danielle's photos are often scantily clad. She regularly wears bikinis and lingerie and has been doing so since she was only 11. All the while, the companies she's partnering with are profiting off of her young age. But Danielle's age is not the only part about her that she's faking to get attention. Oh shit, I went there. Danielle Kahn has faked her marriage to Mikey Tua as well as a pregnancy in 2019 and she admitted that it was just for fun. And are you ready for number one? We got Miss Lil Tay. Oh girlfriend, I haven't talked about Lil Tay in a minute. I kind of miss Lil Tay. 
Oh, you guys. Okay, so if you don't know who Lil Tay is, she was a foul mouthed Asian child rapper and internet star that shot to stardom on Instagram because she would swear and use the N word. <laughs> she had more than a million followers on the platform who would make jokes out of trolling her videos where Lil Tay would pose as this like rich nine year old girl. She'd throw $100 bills at the camera, use racial slurs, sit in Lambos, and show off her impressive living quarters. How did a nine year old pretend rapper afford those dope apartments? Well, it turns out that online persona was all just a cash grab. Her older brother was the mastermind behind Little Tay, and he would be directing her when the cameras weren't rolling. She staged fake fights with fellow internet flexor Bad Baby and Will Vicky. The lavish apartments she was showing off, yeah, it turns out that her mother is a real estate agent in Vancouver, and she would let her daughter use her expensive listings in her videos. Oh yeah, and she she got in trouble for that too, apparently. Little Tay actually ended up deleting her social media after her father intervened. He disapproved of Little Tay's online persona and got rid of it for good. No one knows what Little Tay is up to now, but. I'm I'm assuming she's living a normal life under strict adult supervision. <laughs> in a 10, Casey Sosnowski. Now this one isn't a big deal to me, which is why it isn't higher on our list, but it's a prime example of how easy it is for an influencer to flex on you and make you feel bad about your own lack of whatever. An Instagram influencer called Casey Sosnowski posted this photo of herself hiking with the caption, nature is the ultimate healer to all our problems, hashtag nature lovers. It appears like she's hiking through the woods, wearing athletic gear, being all active and Photos like this make me feel fat and boring. But it turns out that Casey's photo shoot was totally staged. She wasn't hiking in the woods, she was next to some trees in her own backyard. Casey was exposed by her own sister on Twitter. Here's the tweet. My sister says that she was going hiking. This is our backyard. This little tweet made Casey go viral, but she didn't really get upset about being called out. Don't you just love siblings? The photo is still up on her Instagram, only now the caption says, did I go hiking? No. Is this my backyard? Maybe. Well played Casey, well played. In at number 9, Amelia Leanne. Liana. Amelia Liana was a famous travel blogger who would post pictures of herself in front of iconic destinations. She has hundreds of thousands of Instagram followers who enviously look at her seemingly amazing lifestyle. I mean, getting to travel anywhere you want is pretty much everyone's dream life. But Amelia was actually exposed back in July of 2017 thanks to one photo that shows her in front of the New York skyline with the caption, what a welcome to NYC, hashtag top of the rock. This photo made it seem like she was standing at the top of the Rockefeller Center which overlooks the New York skyline. I actually prefer going to Rockefeller over the Empire State Building when I'm in New York because you can actually get a view of the Empire State Building. Way better for photos. But Amelia Liana wasn't at the top of the rock. In reality, she was probably in front of a green screen. How did people know this? Because she used a stock image of the Empire State Building that didn't have the Freedom Tower in it. Once she was exposed for this picture, people started to pick apart every single one of her photos. And it just seems like she's taking photos of herself and then just superimposing pictures of iconic destinations. This is actually pretty easy to do with Photoshop. You just need a well lit sharp image of yourself and then you need a sharp image of the background. You can stitch the photos together quite easily. Pop on a filter and boom, the more you know. Sliding into number 8 we got Johanna Olsen. Johanna has 533,000 Instagram followers and she's also a travel blogger. Honestly I'm looking at her feed and it's like damn she really does have the perfect life doesn't she? But is it real? Well some photos are probably real but there are many that are faked. They are too good to be real. Johanna was exposed back in December of 29 for superimposing herself in front of iconic travel spots in Paris. If you look closely at her photos, many of them have pretty bad stitching. She responded to the criticism online and said that she really was at those iconic Parisian spots, but she took separate photos, one of the background and one of her, and then stitched them together. This was one of her captions where she admitted to it. Guys, I was in Paris at this restaurant. They seated me at a table with no view. I really wanted a picture with the best view to get that perfect Paris vibe to inspire you guys. So instead of complaining to the staff about but where they seated me, I simply took a picture of the background that I wanted from a better table and photoshopped it. Really? To inspire me? Or to make it seem like you have a way better life than you do? Guys, come on, Instagram is not real. Nothing is real. <laughs> At number seven, Whoa Vicky. Whoa Vicky, AKA Victoria Waldrip, is an Instagram star based out of Atlanta who has famously claimed to be African American, yet she's very white. Her videos also make a mockery of African American slang and lifestyle. But Whoa Vicky's been exposed time and time again for being nothing more than an actress who's really good at making funny videos. Whoa Vicky is a character. She's been caught on camera breaking character many times. Furthermore, Vicky claims to be from a poor background, essentially from the hood, when it turns out that Victoria Waldrip is the daughter of successful home building entrepreneur Steve Waldrip. She did not grow up living in poverty, she grew up a privileged white girl. Regardless, Whoa Vicky is breaking it in. She likely has a multi million dollar deal with fashion. 
Nova because she's often repping their brand in her posts. Do you guys remember those free iPhone videos too? Oh my god, they were so annoying. I am so glad she stopped that. Regardless, I actually think she's pretty funny, but she's still offensive in her own way. In at six, <laughs> Tiffany Mitchell. Tiffany Mitchell is a lifestyle blogger with 215,000 followers. Back in August of 2019, she came under fire for staging a motorcycle accident for likes. I mean, it's pretty weird that she took beautiful photos of a pretend motorcycle accident that show her lying on the road and being rescued by some male model that just happened to be there. <laughs> so Tiffany said at the time that she did get into a motorcycle accident two weeks before the post. She said it was a very traumatic experience that left her shaken up. She also said she was thrown off her bike and helped by strangers. At first the post got a ton of nice get well soon comments and thousands upon thousands of likes. But then the mean comments started rolling in. It was all too convenient. How is it that she so happened to have a photographer on hand to take stunning photographs of her motorcycle accident? She was also wearing completely inappropriate clothing for riding a motorcycle. And her motorcycle was standing up in the photos. To make matters worse, there was a conveniently placed smart water bottle in some of the photos, leading some people to believe that it was a paid sponsorship done in very poor taste. Tiffany defended herself and said she didn't know that her photographer was taking photos of her, and maintains to this day that the post she made was well intentioned. Halfway there now, at number five, Elle Darby. This scandal changed the way influencers approach brands forever. So back in January of 2018, the owner of the White Moose Cafe in Dublin, Paul Stenson, posted an email sent to him from Elle Darby, but her name was redacted. It read as follows. Hi there. I hope this email finds you well. I'm emailing in regards to a possible collaboration on social media. My name is blank. I work as a social media influencer, mainly lifestyle, beauty, and travel based. She goes on to say that her and her partner are planning a trip to Dublin for an early Valentine's Day weekend, and she asks for a free stay at the White Moose Cafe Hotel in exchange for posts on social media. Now, I know a lot of influencers who do this. They reach out to brands they like, and then they share their media kit, etc. This is how you start brand relationships. But the way Elle went about this is pretty unprofessional. When she was denied her request, she wrote negative reviews on their Facebook page and then made a YouTube video where she played the victim, alleging that the White Moose Cafe exposed her with malicious intent, yet they never shared her name in the post. The White Moose Cafe is also not a big company, it's a small business that can't afford to give an influencer a free stay in their hotel. Needless to say, the owner of the White Moose Cafe was absolutely livid, yo, and he banned all bloggers from his hotel. In a Facebook post, Paul Sensen said, the sense of entitlement is just too strong in the blogging community, and the nastiness, hissy fits, and general hate displayed after one of your members was not granted her request for a freebie is giving your whole industry a bad name. I never thought I would be inundated with negative reviews for the simple reason that somebody was required to pay for goods received or services rendered. In at four, Logan Paul. Back in November of 2016, Logan Paul posted a video called These Glasses Cured My Color Blindness. It has 28 million views at the time of this recording. In the video, he says that he bought special glasses, endochroma glasses, that miraculously allowed him to see color. Logan got a lot of hate for this video and people went on Reddit to expose him for lying about being colorblind. There are actually a lot of people who are affected by colorblindness, particularly men. First of all, endochroma glasses do not work instantly, you've got to wear them for at least 15 to 20 minutes. Yet Logan Paul reacted to seeing colors almost instantly after putting the glasses on. And they don't cure colorblindness, they just enhance certain colors. Logan Paul actually ended up admitting in another video, The Truth About My Colorblindness, that he quote, embellished a lot of what he said for views. He said he exaggerated his reactions in order to create an amazing piece of content that showed what it means to be colorblind. Right. <laughs> Getting close now at number three, Lil Bow Wow. Oh, Lil Bow Wow, aka Shad Moss. Lil Bow Wow was everywhere in the 90s. But lately, things haven't been as poppin' for Shad. Back in 2017, he posted this photo on Instagram of a private jet with the caption, Travel Day, NYC press run for growing up hip hop. Let's go. Sounds like Landon. <laughs> Pretty standard celebrity flex, if you ask me, so most people didn't think anything of it. Of course, until someone who was on a standard commercial flight at the same time as Lil Bow Wow posted this tweet. So this guy, Lil Bow Wow, was on my flight to New York. But on Instagram, he posted a picture of a private jet captioned, traveling to New York today. It turns out that the photo that Lil Bow Wow posted was actually a stock photo of a private plane used by a Fort Lauderdale limousine company. Bow Wow saved the image, put on a filter, then posted it to Instagram. This little stunt actually started a challenge. It was called the Bow Wow Challenge, where people would post photos with seemingly glamorous representations of their posh lifestyles, and then they also showed the harsh reality in the second picture. In at two, Trisha Paytas. I honestly don't know why Trisha wasn't on my first list, but she made it to the top of this one, so here we go. Trisha Paytas has been exposed time and time again for pretending to be something that she's not. She's literally made a living off of Crying Wolf. Just in the last few years, Trisha has announced that she's gay, bisexual, and most recently she announced that she identifies as a transgender man. The same Trisha Paytas who says that she identifies as a chicken nugget. <laughs> 
Trisha was epically exposed in 2019 by Ethan Klein of H3H3 on his podcast where he called her out for her excessive use of Photoshop, saying that it was harming young girls. Trisha was the main focal point of H3H3's video Instagram vs Reality, where he would show edited pictures of Trisha next to photos that show her real face, and she looks pretty much unrecognizable and not like the same person at all. Trisha lost thousands of followers and subscribers over the H3H3 feud, and her antics constantly earn her the reputation of being someone who just lies for attention. I mean, in all fairness, she's pretty good at it, isn't she? And at number one on our list, Sarah McDaniel. Sarah McDaniel is a model who's different from other models. She's got one blue green eye and one brown eye. This condition is called heterochromia. It's a rare condition that can result in abnormal irises. Kate Bosworth is a good example of a celebrity who has heterochromia. Sarah says that she was bullied growing up for her condition, which has now become her calling card. But guess what? She doesn't have heterochromia and has exposed for faking the condition. We know this because Sarah's eye color changes. Sometimes it's a darker shade of blue, and other times it's a bright turquoise. And you can also clearly see her contacts in many close up photos. Oh, yeah, and the Instagram account Celebface has posted a photo of her when she was a child where she has two matching brown irises. Sarah McDaniel has represented many brands. She's been a Playboy cover model. Her different colored eyes are a marketing tool for herself. She's that poor girl that was bullied growing up who now has made her abnormality a career. But it's all a sham. When the former Playboy creative director found out that Sarah McDaniel was not who she claimed to be, a down to earth girl with authenticity, he was not pleased. Mac Lewis said at the time, the whole thing around the rebrand was literally to get rid of retouching and have a model who was more natural looking and authentic. That's the reason she was picked. Also saying that Sarah McDaniel undercut everything they'd been saying about her. Nevertheless, Sarah McDaniel continues to masquerade as someone she's not, arguing that her eyes look different in different types of light. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> you can clearly see from this photo here though that that's a lie. There are even entire Instagram accounts made to expose her, like Sarah McDaniel lies. <laughs> Coming in number 10, Brittany Dawn. Back in 2018, this fitness influencer faced a ton of backlash after she was accused of scamming her followers into paying for a $300 diet plan, exercise program, and online coaching session. On top of that, she promised her fans that she would provide them with an ebook about her course, but after paying for it, many people received nothing at all. When a man actually confronted her about stealing all of this money from her followers, she actually owned up to her scamming ways and made an apology video. Not to him, of course. No, 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 no. At first, she refused to speak with this guy, and then much later, a vague apology was read from her phone addressing the situation. Allegedly, she still hasn't even issued full refunds after being called out by her followers. People even started a petition to stop her from promoting this bogus program, and in the description it says, With over 500,000 followers primarily made up of young girls, Britney falsely promotes women empowerment on her social media platforms while continually scamming and lying to her followers, clients, and fans. Britney has scammed hundreds of women out of their hard-earned money through the fraudulent practices of her LLC, Britney Dawn Fitness. Coming to number 9, Aggie Lau. Back in 2018, this travel influencer faced immense backlash after charging her followers nearly $500 for a crash course on how to grow their social media, although sadly they did not exactly get what they expected. In fact, after receiving payments from a number of people, she allegedly just disappeared citing health issues and Wi-Fi problems. What's wild is that people who bought into this scam said that half of her lessons on social media included having fans try to sell and promote her own products and the course itself. Nice little pyramid scheme going on, I see. Her story soon went viral though, and so she was left with no choice but to give people their money back. At least we hope. Coming to break, FaZe Clan. The whole FaZe Clan has come under fire recently for also getting involved with this recent cryptocurrency scam. More specifically though, FaZe Clan has fired K and suspended three other members, Jarvis, Nikan, and Tico. Back in June, it was revealed that the pro gamers promoted an altcoin called Save the Kids. A portion of the proceeds they collected from their fans was supposed to go to charity, but unfortunately, that was just not the case. According to Kotakyo, after a ton of people invested in this altcoin, the value suddenly dropped dramatically, leading to a lot of people losing a ton of money and then accusations were hurled at these FaZe Clan members for engaging in a pump and dump scam. In a statement from FaZe Clan, they said, FaZe Clan had absolutely no involvement with our members' activity in the cryptocurrency space, and we strongly condemn their recent behavior. The trust and respect of our fans has been and will always be our number one priority. Mm hmm, I'm sure. Coming in number 7, Kayla Massa. Kayla Massa had garnered over 300,000 Instagram followers and 100,000 YouTube subscribers. But on February 13th, 2020, federal authorities in New Jersey arrested and charged her after a complaint led to her being found guilty of illegally scamming over 45 of her own followers out of almost $2 million, many of which were businesses and people under the age of 18. Kayla would post photos of just piles of money and caption them with something along the lines of, hit me up if you're interested in making legal cash. When people would message her about this though, she would encourage them to hand over 
over their banking information so that she could better manage their money. And once she had access, Massa would drain their accounts. She would hide fake checks of stolen money by depositing them into her followers' bank accounts, using the names of real businesses, and then would withdraw the cash before the bank could flag it as suspicious. Authorities were able to link the fraudulent checks though to specific stores, and after checking security cameras, found Massa on film shopping and paying for items with these checks. Coming to number six, Alyssa Violet. Alyssa Violet, who has just over 3.7 million subscribers on YouTube, left fans frustrated and very confused after she did a Louis Vuitton giveaway. In order to enter the contest to win a Louis bag, all you had to do was follow a company called Cheek that was sponsoring this giveaway and tag two friends in the comment section. At first, Alyssa posted that she would be announcing the winners, but then that post was pulled. Then when fans checked this Cheek page, it resulted in a broken link. From there, this other account appeared called Cheek Wins, and on that page, they began saying that they were going to notify the winners. However, one of the winners from California told BuzzFeed News that she had not received her Louis Vuitton bag and that communication was awful with Cheek. Cheek then also responded to BuzzFeed and said that the winner would receive their prize soon, but the other two winners were suddenly disqualified for being too young or not residing in the US. Plus, to make things even weirder, the spokesperson for Cheek said that they've scrapped the company. So yeah, just one big scam for more followers. Coming to number 5, Austin McBroom. After being outed as the CEO of Social Gloves Entertainment, Austin came under fire for not paying the fighters. If the fighters don't get paid, well then the scam was to get these inexperienced influencers to bring their fan bases in to watch them fight so that Austin can make more money. In addition to that though, Austin was also called out in February for selling a program where he promised to teach people the secrets of social media and help them achieve their dreams. In order to access these courses though, fans needed to purchase gold membership which is priced at $50 a month because the first way to make money is to give it to Austin I guess. Coming number 4, Nicole Sanchez. If that name doesn't ring a bell, allow me to remind you. Nicole Sanchez is the influencer who first Nicole Sanchez is the influencer who first went viral for her OK Boomer video while wearing a Bernie 2020 shirt. The video was met with mixed reactions, with users divided over whether the video was cute and charming or cringeworthy. Following her increase in popularity, it became apparent that much of her online fan base were following her for ulterior motives. A significant amount of engagement on her content were users attempting to flirt or describe their physical attraction to her. After Sanchez revealed that she has a boyfriend, she lost over 65,000 Twitter followers within 48 hours. Although fans really started to dislike her when she began to show off her brand new $2 million condo that she had just purchased. Many called it hypocritical as she was just photographed wearing a shirt that said tax the rich. The video drew heavy criticism and overwhelming dislikes for the alleged hypocrisy. Coming number 3, Jamie Zhu. This Australian YouTuber posted a video called How to Fly Business Class for Free which just sounds like the start of every scam. During the Sydney Natives 3 minute video, he tells viewers that he's going to fake his way from a seat in economy to a seat in the business class section. He then heads over to a store in the airport and buys what's called a moon boot, and the boot is meant to be a protective structure for people that have fractured a bone in their foot or ankle. In the intro though, he cuts together a montage of him running around in the airport wearing this boot to clearly show off that his ankle is perfectly okay. Upon telling the flight crew that he had broken his ankle, he is immediately moved up to business class, just leaving his travel buddy in the dust. He then has the audacity upon landing to just stroll off the plane as if the whole thing never even happened. A staff member even says to him, thank you, I hope your ankle gets better. And this is just straight up disability fraud and I don't even think he realized this. When you fake an injury, you're not just gaming the system, you're taking away a service from someone who might actually need it. He's a big fat phony. Coming in number 2, Kristen Cavallari. While Kristen Cavallari was on the reality TV series called Laguna Beach, The Real Orange County, her and some of her friends were caught stealing. In May of 2006, Cavallari and some friends tried to get a 5 finger discount when they walked into a store called Tawny K. The owner told Page 6 about the incident and said, I owned a store called Tawny K. We were painting on a Sunday and I get this call from these four girls from Laguna. They're begging me to please just let them see the store. So I did. When they start to leave, I get this feeling something's wrong. My boyfriend stops one girl and she's got merchandise in her purse. The three other girls start hauling ass. I call the cops and when the girls come back, they've got pants, underwear, tops, they take them to jail, handcuff, the whole thing. I don't press charges, cut fade two weeks ago, there's a split picture of Jessica on one side and this girl, Kristen from Laguna Beach on the other, and my daughter is like, oh my god, she's the one who stole from your store. And now she's this big thing. Not a good look, Kristen. Not a good look. Coming in at number one spot, Colleen Ballinger. Colleen has said before that she has always tried to directly engage with her fans and due to the nature of how open she is about her life, sometimes she shares too many intimate details with them. Due to her cultivating this very young audience and naming a fan as the head of her fan club, Colleen started being accused of grooming a ch This claim comes after Ballinger gave away lingerie during a live stream that she had purchased but never worn. So, this was what I was sent. 
I don't even know, sorry, I don't know how to, which way this goes. Colleen went on to explain that when taken out of context, she understands why this would make her look like a terrible person. With no context, you just see a 30 year old sending underwear to a 13 year old fan. Very inappropriate stuff, but as Colleen stated in her video, it was just part of the many strange things that she had sent to her fans. While addressing that in particular, Colleen said that she doesn't know what she was thinking at the time and realizes just how awful this was to do. Which just goes to show you how much of this Miranda Sings character has really affected her real life and the decisions that she was making at that time. Coming to number 10, clothing line fail. In the age of influencers, it's difficult to tell which ones are telling the truth and which ones are faking it. For one influencer named Ari, she found out the hard way that faking your engagement numbers can have disastrous consequences. Online, she appeared to be this fashion influencer who would travel and live a life of luxury. Not to mention, she was a loyal fan of Fashion Nova, so was constantly tagging them in her captions without stating if the post was an ad or not. When it came to launching her own clothing line, she got exposed hard though. Prior to the release, she did little promo for her upcoming launch, and I guess just expected her fans to be fawning over her new merch. Unfortunately, she had to make a post outing herself after she was unable to sell a minimum of 36 shirts for the company that she was working with. This meant that they were suddenly not going to move forward with any of her products. Coming number 9, Taylor Paul. Influencer Taylor Paul has 1.9 million followers on TikTok, but some of her biggest videos as of late have been about her home being haunted. Now, of course, if you believe in ghosts, you'll be quick to want to believe this video. However, TikTok users, on the other hand, were quick to point out how obviously fake these videos were. For example, one person says, Let me tell y'all, it's just a thin string pulling the refrigerator and the light hanging. Focus on the light and you'll see it's all scripted. Which is exactly correct. This video is too coordinated with the music that went along with the video, which we couldn't play because of copyright, but believe you me, it's all scripted. And if that part of her life was fake, imagine what else she's doing on there for clout. Coming to number 8, fake photo op. An influencer named Fiona Moriarty McLaughlin was called out during the pandemic after she went viral for posing for a photo pretending to board up stores along Santa Monica's 3rd Street Promenade following mass riots across the city. The retail area had been severely damaged by looters the night beforehand, and I suppose to make her followers think that she was a good Samaritan, Fiona decided to fake that she was actually helping. After walking up and holding a drill for maybe 0.2 seconds, she handed it back to the actual person helping and then hopped into her Mercedes SUV and just drove off with her photographer slash boyfriend. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Really the video has been viewed over 29 million times on Twitter and was shared by Ava DuVernay who said, you know what? I'm, I think I'm going to put Twitter away for a few minutes before I throw this phone across the room. Which is right on par with how I feel about this selfish act as well. Coming to number 7, Marta Rentel. We spoke about Marta Rentel on this channel before. If you recall, she was the influencer that was selling her love as an NFT for a whopping 250k. Marta is a Polish influencer who is very forward about the separation of an online persona that she has and herself in real life. So this is why I put her on this list. You, you can't be out here faking some online persona and scamming people out of money and not make it onto this list. Getting exposed for living a fake life doesn't always have to happen by some randos online. It can sometimes be the influencer themselves. She actually said that her online Online persona is Marty Renty, which is who this lucky winner I guess will be receiving love from. It's such a farce that I, I can't even keep it together whenever I read back over this information. Rentel is clearly faking an online personality to trick men into paying for love. Turns out love do cost a thing, and if you got that reference, please comment Nick Cannon. Coming number six, Addison Ray. Back in September of 2020, a viral TikTok appeared to show that Addison had registered as a Republican three times, once in 2014, and again in 2016, and again in 2018. The video racked up more than a million views, and so Addison had to address it, and in her response she said, This isn't real. First, I'm from Louisiana. Second, I'm not even registered to vote and never have been. I'm actually doing it for the first time with someone important, and I'm excited to do so. This is fake. However, that being said, it baffled many of Addison's fans when she showed up to a UFC event attended by former President Donald Trump. Addison seemed adamant that she was not Republican, but had to answer to many after she introduced herself to Trump and said that it was nice to meet him. Many people online expressed their disappointment in seeing how friendly she was with the former president. One person said, Steals from black creators and coddles white supremacists. Are we really surprised? I guess not. Coming number five, Josh Paler Lynn. Two influencers who were in Bali recently had their passports seized after painting a mask on their face instead of actually wearing one. They have since been identified as Josh Paler Lin and Leia Say. While the pair were at a store in Bali, they wandered the aisles as Leia walked around simply with her face painted blue, adding white lines to appear as though it were strapped behind her ears. Although her lips and nostrils were pretty much a dead giveaway that this was just paint on her face. As the pair filmed themselves walking down the aisle, you can see that Leia was attempting to avoid being caught or called out by other people in the store. Although that didn't 
didn't stop people online from calling both of these influencers out for acting like complete morons. Not too long after the video went viral, Indonesian immigration confirmed with the press that both of them had their passwords seized and the authorities would be looking towards deportation. Coming to number four, Catherine McBrew. Catherine was feeling the heat online after a ton of complaints rolled in regarding her skincare brand 1212 Gateway. To promote her new skincare product, she posted on Mother's Day saying, Happy Mother's Day to all the strong mothers in the galaxy. Use our special code Motherly Love to shop our Mother's Day sale. And as you can see from the preview of that top comment, people were not happy to find all of these negative reviews regarding 1212 Gateway. I saw a lot of buyer's remorse happening with one customer saying on Instagram, The resolution to my damaged $100 order was to send a $20 gift card. Save your bank, y'all. With others heeding a much harsher warning, even calling the product itself disgusting. Another customer commented, Do not buy these products. I love them the first time I purchased, but the second time I ordered, they came dirty with pubic or nose hair. Disgusting. I posted a video on TikTok. When they tried to get help from 1212 Gateway, they were either given little to no compensation or were just straight up ignored. This kind of negligence during a worldwide pandemic should not be tolerated either. I feel like a health inspector needs to visit whatever warehouse she is shipping these products out of because that is just unsanitary. Coming number three, Tated. Tayden was an early adopter of the TikTok app and therefore made a giant mark on the platform. He became widely known for his funny yet brief comedy sketches which typically featured a disheveled wig. With over 2 million followers and another 70,000 subscribers on YouTube, he certainly had a dedicated fan base. As soon as his popularity began to rise though, so did the controversy. Another TikTok star named Ian Allen accused Tayden of inappropriate behavior after meeting Tayden on Grindr. He claimed that he didn't know that Tayden had a big following but was interested in him regardless. In response to this accusation, Tayden tweeted out, Never in my life would I have thought I'd be depicted as such a terrible person. It's never been who I am. I've definitely learned, and I can't do anything else but let others kill me. Love you all who have supported me. Thank you. So he didn't really even try to claim innocence, which just made his fans even more disturbed by the accusations. Coming number two, Nessa Barrett. For those of you who don't know, Nessa became big on TikTok and was considered to be part of the hype house as well as the sway house. With over 16 million followers on the platform, she has slowly transitioned into a music career as well. Most of her fans seemed to already love the music that she was creating, but some people were quick to spot that her new music video looked a lot like artist Peach PRC's video for her song called Josh. Thankfully for Nessa, Peach was pretty cool about the content being copied or ripped off, if you will, which to me just shows a lack of creativity from her team, really. In response to the outpouring of people tagging Peach on Nessa's video, she responded with a comparison of the two videos and captioned it with, Okay, Ms. Nessa, I see you. Unfortunately, Peach was attacked by Nessa's fans for commenting on this, so she had to clear it all up by adding, Once again, I'm not coming at Nessa. I'm sure it was her team who pitched the idea to her, and it's not her fault, but as a small artist, I'm still bummed. I'm bummed too. Last but certainly not least our number one spot, Paige Nyman. Now it's one thing to look like a celebrity and capitalize off that clout, but it's a whole other thing to lie to your followers so that you can copy what this celebrity is doing in their life. TikTok's Ariana Grande lookalike did just that. She came under fire from fans of Ariana for recreating her bridal photos. On the caption of the photo of Paige wearing a wedding dress, she writes, Guess who got married? JK, I'm single AF. Although, like I said, even with that JK in there, Ariana fans were still very angry. One fan writes, Paige Nyman is so embarrassing, she goes too far every time. Who the fuck recreates a wedding photo? It's one of the most special events in everybody's life, not something you just simply recreate. She's so scary at this point, for real. While Paige did say that she has become less of a fan of Ariana, it seems like this drama surrounding her copying the singer's life events may have caused too much backlash to continue acting like this.